Hello friends, I'm Brian, and this is Gizmo Board Games. Today I'm doing something a little different. We might want to call it board game adjacent, because I'm not really talking about board games, but I feel this is in the same ballpark. Uh, I like watching reality television. I uh, wish I could participate in some of the re reality TV shows. I feel like participating in a show is akin to playing a game or a board game or whatever. I'm talking specifically about the competition shows where there are eliminations every episode or so. A trend towards having one victor and not like the real world on MTV where, you know, they just kind of follow people around with cameras. I think Naked and Afraid similar. I'm not sure. I don't really watch that one. Um, and other type games where, or other shows where, yeah, it's reality because they're following people around with the camera and documenting things. I'm talking about more like the reality game shows uh, where contestants are put forth in different uh, contests and then someone through whatever the means is, uh, comes out victorious at the end uh, as eliminations go on along the way. I put together a list of 17 different uh, reality show competitions that I know I've watched. I'm sure there are others I've just forgotten. Uh, I did very minimal research, looked up a couple things just to remember the exact title and premise. But for the most part, this is off the top of my head, the reality shows, reality competitions, I should say where I, I've had invested interest at least for a little bit of time. I'm someone who grew up watching and playing sports and playing games and stuff, and I just like competition. I like watching these people participate in competition and wish I could take part. And that's where like board gaming and the like comes into play in my life. It's just a chance to compete. I play solo or with other people. I just want to do what I can do to do the best I can and or help my team win, help myself win, etc. Cetera, etc. Cetera. That's why for solo games I like having that opponent built in, the AI opponent, more than a beat your own score thing. Because there's just the competition in trying to best that other player. So with that said, I'll quickly uh, run down these 17 reality shows in kind of an order of least favorite to most favorite. But really until the final three, they're just kind of what I thought of and a little bit of how much I like them better than the others. So I wouldn't call this a list, and I'm not going to call this a list, um, but definitely the top three or the last three I'm going to mention here are for sure my favorites and probably the longest running ones I've been watching. That said, the first thing I came up with is The Bachelor and The Bachelorette. I think I watched a season of each. I'm just not big on the reality dating shows. I don't see the competition in that as much. More kind of a, a pandering towards, you know, the romance audience and a little bit of competition amongst the, the folks involved trying to vie for the one person. I don't know how many of these people have ever stuck together in the end, so it's whatever. Um, yeah, The Bachelor Bachelorette kind of... Show I watched briefly, um, not too keen on. Big Brother, I also watched this for the first couple of seasons, and then it just kind of got goofy, and um, I don't know, it's more voyeurism than competition, although there is competition involved in various you know competitions, episode to episode, just to keep engagement. I'm not sure how many people would be otherwise engaged if it was just watching people live their lives and occasionally kicking somebody out based on reasons. So that's why uh, Big Brother is kind of another low-tier one. Joe Millionaire, I enjoyed just slightly more than The Bachelor and Bachelorette in that, you know, it was a play on The Bachelor, but the Joe is a regular farm guy and not a millionaire, but all the women thought he was. So I just kind of like that twist on it, a little bit of spoofing The Bachelor, but still played straight. And we'll get on to the not played so straight uh, later down in the list, but Joe Millionaire... It was all right. Um, another dating style show that was all right. Uh, then we get into some of the, the, the singing ones. Uh, the Voice is okay. You know, I like watching people compete. Um, and American Idol, I'll just throw in right now too, was, was the next one on the list. Um, I like The Voice, I think, slightly more than American Idol just because it takes out the you know, the looks of the person, I guess. I don't know, as more singing competition-wise. American Idol, I, I get the enjoyment out of watching the failure. So once it moves into the, the not failure stage, I kind of stop caring. You know, once we get into the actual competition of the game, that's when I stop watching uh, American Idol or, you know, Brit British Idol, I think. And there's all kinds of idols now. But 
you know, I like watching the first few episodes where they're weeding out the, the trash talent and you get a little bit of backstory. I don't mind hearing about those stories either. Um, but once it gets into the, you know, the last 12 or whatever, I kind of stop caring about American Idol. And the voice is kind of similar. I like watching, you know, the part where they audition and, you know, see how good they are. But after that, I kind of lose interest. Next up, uh, Kid Nation was one that was around for just one episode, or one season, I mean. It was just kids out in the wilderness and had them uh, competing to live. It wasn't so much a competition, um, but I just thought this was a really goofy premise. Um, and um, I don't remember who did the video, but somebody on YouTube, there's a video about why Kid Nation was the worst reality show ever, and I thought that was hilarious. Um, but yeah, basically the whole show is just torturing kids uh, with lack of food and... Um, amenities and things i'm sure they got things off off screen um they wouldn't just let these kids uh, suffer through a, a week or two however long it was without any basic resources but they were ill prepared for uh some of the things that happened uh, such as sandstorms and the like uh kind of destroyed these kids living spaces though so from a a tongue-in-cheek i guess uh, reality show Kid Nation just cracked me up and I suggest that YouTube uh, why Kid Nation is the worst reality show or, or something similar if you want to check out that uh, little docuseries on YouTube I thought that was hilarious and really wrapped up my enjoyment of the show all in one swoop uh, the next thing is Sheer Genius I watched one episode of this because my wife's cousin participated in season two uh, of that show so we watched it together when it was live uh, and rooted D on I'm not going to spoil how it turned out but we enjoyed watching uh, that season of Sheer Genius because my wife's cousin D was on that season. Face Off is a makeup uh, I was a theater and movie buff I still am a theater and movie buff and Face Off is kind of a theater uh, makeup competition uh, amongst makeup artists and they put them, or I think it was movie night theater, movies, um, movie monsters and stuff. It was a really cool premise. Uh, lots of neat art on that one. And I really just enjoyed watching Face Off, uh, mostly for the art and the, the re relationship to theater and movies. Project Runway is one I watched with my wife quite a bit. I never really cared a whole lot for it, but we used to watch it together um, back when we first were married, I think. Um, it's kind of one of those shows we watched together along with a couple of the other ones. Uh, this is more her liking than mine, but not bad competition where, you know, they're designing clothing and, you know, it's it's a decent, enjoyable show um, for the most part. All right, one I started watching recently and I need to watch the most recent season. It's been on Netflix. It's Love is Blind. This is a dating show. I guess this isn't so much a competition as, um, so this might cheat the list, but whatever. I, I enjoy it. Uh, it's funny, humorous, and interesting to see if couples actually do stick together. Um, if they've just met over the course of the couple weeks. And I just get a lot of enjoyment of the people watching nature of this one, I guess. And that's kind of, I guess, along with a lot of these, it's just kind of watching people in these weird situations and see what happens. So Love is Blind is a neat one I've been watching recently, and I've got to watch the most recent season that is now available. All right, I'm going to lump this one into uh, kind of the, the Gordon Ramsay <laughs> Uh, Hell's Kitchen. Um, what else did he do? Um, the 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 one where he goes around restaurants and tries to save them. I forget what that one's called, but not much of competition. But I've watched those. Uh, Hell's Kitchen is the competition where the cooks kind of come in and and try to run the kitchen in the hopes of taking over one of Gordon Ramsay's uh, restaurants. I don't know. I've all, I've worked in food service a lot of my life. I enjoyed watching these shows, watching cooking shows, watching cooking channel. I watch those in my spare time as well to try to learn how to cook better because I like good food and I want to make better food when I make food. So I've always enjoyed these. I like the competition. I like Gordon Ramsay. I think he's funny, even if a little crass. So I could see how some might not like it, but I don't mind it. I was in the army. I can deal with crass and I just think it's humorous and a fun competition to watch people try to run a kitchen uh, while they're getting yelled at by Gordon Ramsay. And then America's Got Talent, Britain's Got Talent, whatever's got talent. I just enjoy watching these talented people. I, you know, I like watching the comedians in the, the unique acts, such as the Black Light acts and stuff. We saw one on our cruise that we went on last year uh, live, and that was really cool too. Um, so those are fun. I don't care so much for the singing and the dancing uh, aspect of the Got Talent series, but I like the comedians and the other unique acts and I kind of like watching some of the acts fail in the early episodes too. Um, you know, 
and some good good acts that I wouldn't mind seeing in real life have come out of this show. So lots of fun there. Uh, America's Got Talent, Britain's Got Talent, whatever. Good people, good talent on those shows, and I like them better than the just straight singing ones. I mentioned this one earlier for the uh, the different take on the dating show. Uh, it's the Joe Schmo show. Uh, this was a spoof of reality TV, and it was super funny. I think it was only around for one or maybe two seasons. But basically, they threw one guy into what he thought was a reality competition, Big Brother dating style show. I don't remember 100% the premise. Um, but basically, everybody else on the show were actors, and he didn't know it. And so it was just really great to see him going through as such blatant uh, craziness was going on around him and seeing whether he figured out that he was the only one who wasn't in on the joke. Um, and if he could make it through the whole show, then he won the money. Uh, it was kind of the premise, and it was just really funny, really goofy. Uh, someone who watches reality TV, it was great to see the the spoof take on reality TV, and I thought it came out really well, Joe Schmo show. Uh, the last one before we get into the, my top three is going to be Master Chef. Again, this is uh, another cooking show without Gordon Ramsay yelling at people, and this is watching good chefs just compete in real competitions to see who could be named the Master Chef and uh, take over a Food Network uh, show of their own. Lots of great Food Network stars have come out of this show uh, since it's aired. Uh, I don't know how many seasons have been around now. A whole bunch, I'm sure. But I, like I said, I enjoy watching cooking. I enjoy learning about cooking. And these shows uh, are just the best of the best cooking uh, their, their heads off in a one-hour uh, competition that I wish I could taste along with the judges and see which ones I might prefer. Uh, but some amazing dishes have come out of these shows, and it's just a fun competition about cooking. All right, now my top three. This is where, you know, the rubber meets the road. This is where I got my start in watching reality TV. Uh, the first one is The Amazing Race, and I had wanted to go on this show for the longest time, travel the world. Me and my aunt talked about being the first aunt and nephew uh, competitors. I still don't think they've touched that angle after 30 whatever seasons they've done. But I was just like, the idea of racing around the world and participating in all these competitions and events and just getting these experiences that you wouldn't otherwise get. I like traveling vicariously through the show while still doing that people watching and, and the drama that's going on inside of it. And I'm just happy that uh, Amazing Race has brought a bunch of unique world to my screen and I've checked out some of these places I've seen. I'm still living in Germany and I've definitely been able to travel a lot more than when I first started watching The Amazing Race. Um, and I've checked out some of these places that they've gone to see firsthand myself. And I just enjoy enjoy The Amazing Race and I'm glad it's still on the air because some of it's been canceled numerous times. I wish they wouldn't go with the celebrity route. I'd much rather them just stick to average people running around. And I feel like they've gotten back to that with the most recent seasons. And I'm glad COVID had, did not kick it off because that was definitely a, a concern, I'm sure, uh, for them uh, and, you know, myself, what's going to happen with the show. But it is back now post-COVID with some changes that may or may not be for the better. I kind of like them fighting over plane spots and stuff, but I can see, you know, how the world's changed anyway. So they're doing chartered flights now and there's no fight for the flights that there used to be. But still enjoyable. It's a show I've been watching literally since season one. I did miss a bunch of seasons kind of in the middle where I kind of fell off a little bit, uh, got into life, got in the army and such, you know, so I've caught up with some of those uh, and I'm working my way through still some of the seasons, but I'm back to watching it live again as well. And it's just nice. It's a good show. I enjoy it. My second favorite uh, reality show is Survivor, uh, the one that started me off in my uh my path here. I watched the first season uh, from episode one back when it came out when I was either in high school or first years of college. I was just hooked from the first moment of the idea of people being stranded on the beach, fighting to survive and, you know, voting each other out based on, you know, social circumstances. The gameplay has changed a lot in the years. Obviously it's on season 44 now. Um, but yeah, it just, it's always hooked me. The people watching the strategy involved, um, I enjoyed the first season, the, the surprise, uh, you know, the fact that alliances were formed and people thought that was anti what the game meant. But now, like, that's how you survive. You, you need people on your side and you need, you know, to not be voted out. So 
the fact that they thought that was this controversial thing in season one just cracks me up because really that was how you should have been playing the game. And, you know, Richard Hatch and, and Sue Hawk and them, they, they played the game the way I feel like it should have been played from the start. So it's neat. I enjoy Survivor. I still watch uh, reality uh, podcasts and broadcasts and stuff about the show. When I watch it, I watch it live. I'll watch it not tomorrow night because I'll be at work, but, you know, on replay afterwards. Um, Rob has a podcast. I enjoy uh, Rob Sesternino was a former player back in the Amazon season, what, four or five. And now he runs a podcast talking about the episodes. He also talks about the Amazing Race a little bit and other reality shows. So, you know. I watch his podcast a lot. And another one I watch a lot is Wesley from Once Upon an Island. He does podcasts about Survivor, the great coverage of all the players. He he really breaks down the players in the seasons, you know, past seasons and the live, you know, episodes week to week. I always watch him and his wife talk about those. Um, it's great. So check out Once Upon an Island. Wesley uh, is a subscriber to my channel too, I believe, or at least commented on a few of my videos. So. A uh, little shout out to his channel uh, for mine. <laughs> I really enjoy your stuff. Uh, Once Upon an Island, I recommend it to anybody else who has interest in Survivor and Amazing Race coverage. That is just bar none. It's, it's great coverage. But my favorite reality show, and I've covered this one in the past, is The Mole. Uh, my favorite uh, iteration of The Mole is Des Mole from Belgium. I think they do it the best, and it's currently airing live right now every Saturday night or Sunday. I don't know. I watch it once, you know, the subs and everything are released uh, during the week, but it's just that they do a great production value. But the mole, I really enjoy this one because you can play along from home. You don't know who the mole is, just like the contestants don't. So you can watch and guess and play along uh, and watch people you eliminated who may or may not have been a suspect of yours and re reevaluates everything that happens along with the, uh, the show contestants. So it's a game I would love to go play along with. I love playing along from home and, you know, trying to guess who is the mole. And, uh, yeah, I came to Netflix last year. I think they're working on season two. Uh, if you want to check out a really crummy version of it, uh, the remake from last year, uh, it, it just the, the product it was, it was not a good version of it. But if you want to get your feet wet with the mole, you know, the old seasons, the celebrity seasons are on Netflix right now. America, Netflix, uh, U.S., I believe has a couple of celebrity seasons, which aren't the greatest, but at least it's something. And then the season that came out last year was definitely not the greatest, but it's, it's all right. It, it, it'll get your, your feet wet for what the show can be. And then you can go find out uh, De Mole or Irvias De Mole, which is the Netherlands version, or just the original uh, U.S. Mole seasons, if you can find them. Uh, that's what got me started back in college, just watching the first season and being like, wow, this is, this is great. It's a, a TV show, a reality show that I can play along and, you know, try to see if I was right or wrong. So there you have it. 17 reality shows that I've watched in my life and the ones I really enjoy. Uh, if you're new here, uh, welcome. I normally do board game content, but maybe, you know, the reality TV uh, header is what brought you in. And if you like this, go ahead and give it a thumbs up and stick around by hitting the subscribe button. I bring uh, one video a week. Uh, again, normally board game related content, not this kind of board game adjacent stuff. Um, but go ahead and comment below about your favorite reality shows if you want to and uh, come on back next time. Bye.